Some people play footy, I play plants, okay? And the reason being that all our medicine is disappearing. So this whole heap of medicines that heard stories, people, all Aboriginal families heard the stories, and I'm just fortunate enough to have a father that showed me. Steve Kemp, I'm a Gungaloo man, I live out at Warabinda, and this is my story. This is a, what they call a lemon scented gum, and it grows very well around our Warabinda area. Anyway, what it is, is a cit citronella, if I say that word right, but what that means is it, it's an insect repellent. So back in the old days, we'd, we'd grab a leaf, probably preferably these greener shoots, We'd pull some off like that and we'd um, rub on our arm. And guess what? That would keep mosquitoes away. Well, this plant here is a peach leaf quinine. Now, the reason for that, because this leaf looks like a peach, peach tree, if you've got a peach tree. The other thing that's pretty good with this one, when you break that leaf off, a little bit of white sap comes out, right? So then you identify, so you've got to identify the tree. So then that next test is, eh, run him on your tongue and you feel all little little hairy, hairy bits there so therefore that's the right one. This one here is used when you drink the famous Gumby Gumby. Sometimes you drink that too much Gumby Gumby and then you get immune to it and Gumby Gumby cures colds as well as other things and then when you drink it when you've got a cold it don't work so then you come to this one and you do the same with this one that you do with Gumby Gumby boil it leaf and drink it like tea. So that's one, one cure. It has some other cures. Because it's called quinine, uh, the mosquito bites you with malaria, and it has said that they drank this to cure malaria in the Second World War. So, two cures there. What I want to do one day is have a plantation where I grow all that medicine, all the rare medicine, all the rare bush foods, and just preserve it, you know? And if I want to get the goannas, well, there's not enough goannas around, so one day I'm going to breed goannas and put goannas back into the bush. With the Gumby Gumby, the only way I can tell is I grab one leaf and I bite into it. And first of all, nothing happens. You can't taste nothing. Between 10 and 20 seconds, mm -mm -mm, this starts growing on you. You can get other, other trees that look the same, but until you do the bite test, until you know what it tastes like first up, so until you do that bite test, you don't know what you got. I've found five species like this and they're Pitosporum, the Latin name, but there's five species of them that I found that are different. They all look the same but they're not quite. If you get a, get a cold and you got a sniffle now and you take some leaf off and you boil it up and take it tonight before you go to bed, your cold will be gone. That's the first thing. Other things are like rashes. Uh, what Dad used to do, he used to get this and boil it up and put an old sheet, get an old sheet and rip that up and wrap it around your leg and that would cure your uh, rashes. We know that it does cure da dandruff so you can wash, wash your head with it, can cure dandruff. But the most important thing it can do and which we've proven is uh, cancer. Well this is a common, common name for us out this way, everyone knows it, nearly every kid knows this tree out at Warabinda. It's uh, the soap tree. What you do with this one you rip the leaves off and you crush them up in your hands and you add a little bit of water and it froths up. Um, the other part of it is these seed pods here. They were a bit too late for them but on these seed pods they have a crust around the outside and you take the crust or the husk off of the shell of the, of the seed and that becomes red dye. So this is how we used to dye our stuff. So, so this has got a red dye, this one. Now this one here, see the sock on him? And see the pattern of the bark? Very, very common tree to pick out. This is a Morton Bay ash, they call it. This is a eucalyptus. But anyway, why this tree is important? 
not for food, not for medicine, but for fire. So see this piece of stick I got here, this obviously fell off this tree, lying down here on the ground. So back in the old days I was told that if you put this end up here, or put one of these ends of the stick into the fire, and let it grow, gl go to red, and it'll start to burn. Then you take it out to fire, and it'll still be gl glowing red, and it burns like a cigarette. So this big long stick here, this is about two meters long. If you were to light the end of that, that would probably last you probably two days. So instead of doing the old light the fire up with the rubbing of the sticks, and that took a lot of effort, we'd make sure we had a Morton Bay ash stick if we wanted to move camp. And then if the rain came along, we'd put that up a hollow log to protect the fire, or put something over it, you know, to protect it from the rain and you'd never have to light a fire again. So you know, if you had to rub sticks together every day, that would be a bit of an effort, you know? But this is the way we used to do it. And with this stick here, being two meters long, if we lit the end up, like I said, last year two days. My great passion in life, because I'm living out in the bush now, I used to be a city slicker, but now I can look at the animals and the trees and the land, the way that my dad told me, and then utilize the medicines and uh, record the medicines for the younger people when they come along.